What up guys? My name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading and welcome to the Wheelhouse. Okay, so <clears throat> a lot of things have happened. The other day I made a video that said kitchen sink sell-off, why this may be good. Okay, and then I had explained that 90 to 95 percent of the time there is a big rally within seven days of a kitchen sink sell-off and kitchen sink sell-offs typically come at the beginning of a bear usually crossing a major resistance level or a major news catalyst and we've had plenty of those <clears throat> so the only way to get one of these big ra uh, rallies is to have some form of a catalyst so that could be something like the war ending with Russia and Ukraine. Nope, that's not happening. It could be the end of a food crisis. Sorry, not happening yet. Um, it could be, you know, uh, everybody is free to roam and go back to work and there's no COVID lockdowns in China. Nope, not this time. Uh, supply chain shortages, nope. Well, what could it be? Well, I'll tell you what it could be. If you think like the institutional investors, the way that they think is also the way that I think. And, you know, in the end of the day, it will come back to fundamentals, even though we're in a technically driven, news catalyst driven style market right now, very choppy. That's why uh, I'm going through so much technicals with you uh, last couple months. We're not in a fundamentally driven market. However, out of all the markets, the fundamentally driven market will be there consistently, okay? There's only a few things that are consistent in life. One is death, two is taxes, three is change, and four, the fundamentals will prevail, okay? Um, so in order for a kitchen sink sell-off to, to have a rally, we need a catalyst. We need, we need to light the match and start the fire. And in order to get that spark, the only thing that I can see that could happen since the war is still going and we still have inflation and we still have a hawkish fed and we still have COVID lockdowns and we still have supply chains and food crisis and we still have um, commodities, uh, you know, uh, high demand, low supply, still have all that stuff. But one of the biggest fears for everybody out there, me included, and I'm sure you too, is that we would have slowing growth or signs of slowing growth on this particular quarterly earnings, especially in the heavily weighted mega caps, such as Google, PayPal, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook. Of course, we have Pinterest, we have Twitter, we have Snap, okay? We have a Qualcomm, it's a big one. We have Visa, it's a big one. We have a lot of earnings coming out that aren't that bad. When everybody's talking about recession, recession, slowing growth, this, that, and the major fear which creates the kitchen sink sell-off, there's two things I want to tell you. Number one, this is when Warren Buffett, this is the moment when Warren Buffett was talking about blood in the streets. This is why I've been buying all this stuff that is like it's crap. I've been, I've been buying like hood at nine bucks. I've been buying, uh, I just bought more SoFi. I now have 9,000 shares of SoFi. Uh, my average cost on that is seven seven oh two. Okay, I wasn't. I, it didn't go down much on that last thousand I bought, but still, I'm not that far off, and that's a pretty darn good price. Okay, um, I have hood uh, in the in the mid nines. I mean, I have uh, sun run down in the the right about twenty bucks. Um, I mean, these are things that were three hundred percent higher. So I'm just starting to accumulate. Um, I picked up DraftKings. I picked up Lucid at eighteen buck, eighteen twenty-two. I picked up. Uh, I got Lucid. Wait, no, Lucid at eighteen twenty-two. Sorry, and DraftKings at um, thirteen thirteen eighty-six. Pretty good price. Um, yeah, and so you know, I've been buying more Google. I've been buying more Amazon and. And, um, I've also been doing exactly what I was going to do and it has been working really really good guys I have you know over here on this pivot when we got here I said it looks like a pivot and I started making all these videos guys you need to get out take your profit don't worry about it they'll go up later you can make money then don't trip get your money out get your profit out get on a margin I said it over and over and over and over and over okay because I am a pivot to pivot 
momentum based swing traders. So this is the kind of stuff I look for. So I, I see this rejection, you know, we're on the Dow, but I mean, it was going on on all of them. And I'm looking at the trip that this is a minor trend reversal. I'm looking at the pivots and I'm like, looks like a pivot. We need to get out. If you didn't have a stop to take small losses on, on some of them and you bled deep on others like I did, I made a mistake. I'm not going to lie. I was I was trend trading in the ribbon. Well, the ribbons turned colors on me real quick because I had realized that the Fed and the government, they do not want your stocks to go up. They do not want your crypto to go up. It is now come to light that that is the truth. So will we get a kitchen sink rally? I think so. Will the Fed come and hamper it down? Most likely consider yourself lucky if you buy this bullish pivot that could be coming heavy and then when you get to even or profitable hopefully profitable guys move it out okay cash on the side no loss through all this you know what my realized losses have been 206 dollars although my unrealized losses have been uh tremendous uh however i am digging through it i have pulled money to the side Profitable, small profits, but I've gotten them out anywhere from, I don't know, say two grand to um, 30 bucks even, uh, but but realized gains into the side. De-risking, coming out of margin. I've gotten 64% of my money out. And with that money, when this was coming down, you know what I did? I put it into SQQQ, SDAO, and SPXU. So as the SPY, the DAO, and the uh, NASDAQ were coming down, I was making money. So then when it starts to pivot, Again, off this major support, there's one, okay, breaks, and here we are again, and it looks like it's below, but look at the body. The body is right here, it's right above. So this looks to me, I'm telling you early, it's looking to me like we're gonna pivot, okay? And look, it just so happens to fall right on the top of the primary trend, which is considered a support, okay? This is good. I also see, and through experience of doing this for a long time, see something else that I want to describe to you. Back in 2021, there was a moment when I had nobody on TV, nobody, nobody in the news, nobody on YouTube, nobody, nobody was talking about this. And I did not have a YouTube channel back then. It's this one. I did not have a YouTube channel back then, but I did have my brother and I was talking to him almost daily about stocks and you know trading and investing and you know and we just came off that huge run of 2020 and this is February right here. And the night before this fell, the very night before I called my brother on the phone. I didn't text him, usually I text him. I called him and I said, "Yo, before you go to bed tonight, I want you to put stops on everything. We were up well over 100% on Tesla. I was up over 100% on all the arcs at that point. Um, and a, I had a nasty portfolio. We were up major. And uh, the night before, I called him. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I'm not even kidding. And I was like, dude, I see something in the charts. I see, I see sneaky distribution in that volume. And something's going to happen. Something is looming right here right here and i went I, I went into my thing and i put all my stops on and um unfortunately he didn't and the very next day boom and i had my stops tight um which i thought was too tight at the time but knowing that it just kept going down i, I was glad moved the next day i was completely moved to cash on just about everything within three days i was moved to cash on everything that's why i had that video a long time ago why i don't worry about a stock market crash because if, when you're using the stops, if you buy technically and you buy correctly, um, you know, maybe a breakout or, or a bounce off of a support, you know, or maybe bullish momentum off the hourly, with, you know, you can see that on your indicators, you're in the right sector, all the indexes are going on, everything is synced up, right? And you buy, remember, 80% of all your problems go away in the future if you buy correctly. So essentially, if you enter correctly and then you set your stops accordingly, which I teach you in the courses, if you set your stops accordingly and you basically, let's say you buy here and it goes up and this one does not break there, well, then when this moves up, you move your stop and then you move your stop and you move your stop and you move your stop. But then when this comes down, it takes you out and you went all the way from here to here 
that's why I don't worry about a market crash. And that's why I didn't have to worry back here. And I had a large account because everything just goes, you ladder up. It's like it goes up, stop, up, stop, up, stop, up, stop. And when it comes down, boom, you're moved to cash. Okay. Instead of holding through it. Now I made a mistake. I was in this last one. Okay. But I haven't taken realized losses. Now you have to be a straight animal like me. Okay. I work 18, 20 hours a day. Not kidding. I'm up in the pre-market. I mean, from the time it starts to open, of course, I sleep a little bit, check in the middle, go back to bed, wake up before the market opens. So I'm in the pre-market. I know what's going on. I am grinding through the whole market, crypto and stocks, charts, different time frames. I got it all set. I work in the aftermarket. I'm looking at earnings. You know, I'm organizing watch lists. I'm preparing. I'm looking at, you know, what's going on. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm preparing all the time on top of all the preparation that I'm doing. I also am not fully invested because when you get into trouble, when you're say trend trading and trusting the ribbon and then, you know, Jerome Powell comes out with Lagarde and they decide to tell the world without telling the world that basically they don't give a care about your stock values and it's going to help them in their deflationary process. And they just keep sending out all these different Fed speakers to like collapse your value. Well, that's part of the process. What, what I worry about is that part of the process is not just crypto and Starks, but part of the process is going to be your real estate as well. Um, but we could talk about that in another video. I don't want to take too long. Look, kitchen sink sell off. We know what the catalyst is going down. We need to light a match. We need to get a spark and get a catalyst up. Well, Facebook, who I personally thought was going to tank the whole market. I have zero faith in Zuckerberg, but I thought that Apple would be good. Microsoft would be good. Google would be good, which they all were. And then I thought that um, Facebook would take the market down, like nail in the coffin. Boom. They came out, gave some decent guidance, did okay. It wasn't huge surprises on anybody, but it wasn't showing slowing growth slowing and grinding the gears down to a halt into a major recession. That could be enough to get a catalyst to get one of these big bullish pivots. See how this is a this is a pivot up, pivot down, pivot up, pivot down, up, down, up, down, up, down, big up cap, big up rally. And those of you who are caught who didn't sell, I sold a lot. Okay, I sold a lot uh, right in here. And then I didn't get it all out and I've been working towards that. And this has been very damaging. This has been very painful. But look, notice how it's like a one, two, three, double bottom kind of situation, triple bottom, whatever, on this uh, this old support that we talk about on this channel all the time. And, and I've been walking you through it. And if you notice, everything I show you with the miners and the pivots and the the supports and resistances, they're all playing out. If you're watching this channel daily, you're seeing how this whole thing develops into uh, the future, <laughs> which is where we're at today. So notice it comes right down. And I've been talking about this particular date right here. This uh, this is March 5th, 2021 right here. Okay, this one was over in the, the May 18th. This is when it started to rally back up. So all these have significance and importance. And when this one ran up, it created a minor trend reversal. When this one ran up, it created another minor trend reversal. Um, this one is more important. This one is even more important. And these two are also important. But this is an important uh, uh, support because the market decided it was. It wanted to pivot off it. It looks like it might do it again. If it breaks through this, all bets are off. We're screwed. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of hope. And I tend to spot these things really well. I also through experience, like I had told my brother that one night, yo, set those stops. And I got stopped on everything, got all my cash to the side. That was extremely damaging. Back then, I didn't have a YouTube. I was watching a lot of the guys on the YouTube. They didn't even know what was going on for like a month. They were already in it, losing a fortune for like a month. Um, yeah, I was, I was like poaching. And I'll be honest, right in here, okay, um, right in here when I got out, got moved to cash, I caught this pivot right here. And I remember telling my brother, I was at a, I was at a Costco. I was at a Costco. And one of these days right here, okay, so I, I started to rebuy. And one of these days, I hit an all-time record for a daily gain. All-time record for me. It was a big, big day. 
And um, yeah, it was a huge day. And I remember telling my brother, he was like, dude, I've never had a day that big. What I'm telling you is these relief rallies, when you're trend, like when you're in a downtrend, the re relief rallies can be good. Look, downtrend relief rally can be good. Now, not only is it 90 to 95% of the time you get a major kitchen sink sell-off relief rally. I'm not saying it's going to bring us back to a bull market. I'm just saying it could be one of these. Now, here's the deal. The rallies are really, really big on the relief rallies in the bear markets. They're bigger than the bull markets. I don't know if you guys knew that. So if you notice, this rally was sick, right? Everybody's like, oh, I got a ton of money back. But if you got caught, didn't sell, well, you might have another chance. Now, we got a lot of resistances. We can knock on the door here, 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 the pattern here. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't even know if it's going to go, but I'm excited. Ford, PayPal, Pinterest, Twitter, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Qualcomm. I mean, it's hitting. It's hitting and it's not showing slow growth. And that is the catalyst, the match, the spark that we need to get a relief rally off the kitchen sink sell-off, baby. So, does not look good. Lower lows, okay, but not everything goes down all the time. Okay, it has to come up sometimes. Might not come up to make a higher high, which is what we really want, but you know, I'm using these moments, if we get one, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to, I'm using these moments to um, use these, what I've been telling you in every video. I'm going to put money in to the bullish pivots, okay, and I'm going to spring springboard myself out, okay. I don't have that many positions open anymore. I'm some of them are some of them are green. Uh, I just rebought my my Peabody. Uh, they have earnings in the morning. They're coal. I mean, this thing made me a fortune. I sold it. Here, I'll just show you. I had sold it. I said on here I wasn't gonna sell it because I was up like ninety six percent at one point. But I mean, it went it went down like thirty percent, and I I lost like five percent of that, and I was like, I'm out. But that's just me. So I started doing this whole thing, and I just got I kind of like got out like over in here. And then I just rebought. I just rebought earlier today, and I'm already up almost two grand on that. Oh, like, and I just bought that this morning. And all my trade alerts. Somebody in the Discord was like, "Dude, your Bitcoin trade alert was golden." I'm stoked, but honestly, all of the trade alerts are golden. I took every one of those, and I'm making money on all of that stuff. I got my technicals down so good down on the hourly. It is off the chain. Let me just show you something. Check this out. Okay, here's the here's the um this is the hourly time frame, okay? And we're just gonna start up here, eight, okay? Eight. Okay, you got your blue line, blue cloud, blue ribbon above the 200. We're still in it, baby. We got in eleven dollars and ninety cents. METC, coal, boom. What's happening here? We're curving. What happens when you get to the middle of the curve? It signifies a reversal. There's your blue cloud. You got double buy points, blue cloud, tightening ribbon coming up on it. We're in making money. Zim. Zim is a beautiful one. We made a ton of money on this. I actually got a special dividend I didn't even know about. It's insane. It's the biggest dividend I've ever seen. Um, this thing, we made a ton of money on it. Had to get out. Okay, double double sells. Had to get out. And this thing just got hammered right after their dividend. Yeah, it was like right after their dividend. And then boom, I just re-entered this sucker. Why did I re-enter it? Well, I, go, I trade on the hourly. Okay. And look what happened on the hourly. Boom, reversal. There's your buy signal. And off to the races, you just got the blue ribbon. You're catching some resistance at the, the 200. But no, because you're already up in the after hours. These things are ready to explode again. They rotate. Look, I talk about revenge trading. Okay, what is revenge trading, Chris? Well, revenge trading is basically all those losses you take as a trader, those small losses with your stops and you have those big wins. Those losses are in your brokerage somewhere like as realized losses. And so you just put all those in a spreadsheet, uh, make sure you don't have a wash, and then you put them in a watch list, and then when they get bullish, and sometimes it takes nine months, sometimes it takes a year, two years, you never know. Well, Beyond Meat, once upon a time, a long time ago, I lost like seven grand on it. So I saw Beyond Meat raging, okay? And uh, I, I caught that thing, and boom! I, I literally caught it. I bought more and more and more, and then it came down, I sold, sold, and then it came down here and I bought more and I wrote it up and I sold a little bit. And I still have a little bit after hours and, or did I sell it? Hold on. Oh no, I still have it. And it's actually down. So is it down after? Oh, it's down in after hours. Okay. So 
whatever. I've, I've already got some money back. And if you go look at this thing, if you go look at this thing, Beyond Meat. Now, why did Beyond Meat go up? Okay, let's just clear the speculation. I don't, I'm, I don't think it was a short squeeze. The reason Beyond Meat went out, up is because McDonald's cleared Beyond Meat today for permanent menu use. You know, you know, McDonald's, like the McRib, that'll be gone sometimes. Well, Beyond Meat is staying. It's staying on the McDonald's menu. What does that mean? That means that they have a big contract. McDonald's is a big player, a big buyer. That means their earnings are going to do good. So that's going to show up in the charts. And boom, we crossed. This is outperforming the S&P. Low and cross, huge. Vortex crossing, this looks good. This looks huge. But I like to do it on the one hour. And boom, baby, boom, we're about to hit. Tightening of the ribbon, price action is down here, but it, but hey, this is now going to be a level. This is going to be a level. Trust me, watch. That's how technicals work. It's going to be a level. So it'll get up there. Uh, let's go look at Ave. Okay, now Ave is kind of doing a little sidewaysness, but it is, it is, uh, it's still good, but it's rejecting off the 200. So I'd be careful. It looks like all the cryptos are kind of, um, okay, look. Here's the thing. I've been trading in and out of cryptos and I've been crushing the game. I've been like, but I'm realizing the gains and then I'm waiting and then I'm getting back in the way that I do it, riding it up and then I'm getting out, realizing the game. I'm just doing that like every single day. Um, and and that's, that's just day trading. And right now it's volatile, but traders like volatility, right? And when you have a system and you kind of know what you're doing, like you can do that and you're comfortable and you, you don't mind sizing into it. Um, because you know you're confident in your system so i've been doing that and um uh you know remember bitcoin is the dow of crypto think of bitcoin as an index okay and all the altcoins are underneath the index bitcoin so when bitcoin is happy you know everything in the index is happy when the dow is upset everything in the dow is upset when the nasdaq is happy everything in the nasdaq is happy everything is like green tides lift boats red tides sink boats right so if Dow is an index, if you think about it like that, when it's happy, everything is happy. Well, they have they have now taken the index of crypto, which is Bitcoin, and attached it to the damn stock market, okay? To the SPY and the NASDAQ, essentially. So when the stock market goes down, so does Bitcoin. Bitcoin wants to rally. Uh, Bitcoin wants to rally. Crypto wants to rally. The only thing that's holding crypto back is it's scared of the Fed. It's scared of the inflation. It's scared of all of it. It's because it's tied to the NASDAQ. Everything goes up and down with the stock market. And unfortunately, all the alts are connected to Bitcoin. So this might be a moment when there's a decoupling. Maybe some of the alts start to kind of thrive and do their own thing. And I'm keeping an eye on a lot of that for us. We should talk about Dogecoin real quick. There's something I, I want to talk to you about Dogecoin that I've seen here. Okay, here's the deal. Don't even look at the one hour. This is what I want to show you. See that blue line back there? See that green triangle? See how this red went to like a green back there? Okay. This is the daily. All right. So when the blue line did this, that was a good run. You would have bought here and went there, you made money. I told you to get out. If you shorted there and covered your short, there you made money. Okay. Now, again, <clears throat> I don't like to buy it when it goes down. I like to buy it when it curves and starts going up in the direction of price action. So right in here. But it went red there and it just flashed blue again with the buy. Doge looks like, and this is the daily. And look, you just went green here. Looks like you're getting some indecision. This is just the FUD in the news. Uh, a big directional move on the stochastic. You're getting some indecision. But what I wanted to say is I think Doge is going to make a move. I think Doge is going to make a move. And on top of that, why wouldn't it? Because Elon just got Twitter and Elon's like bullish on Doge and Bitcoin. So we're probably going to get some momentum. It's just that we got to watch the Fed to try not to like hurt us because that's what they tend to keep doing. Um, what else? Ford uh, looked good. Um I, I mentioned PayPal the other day. All those ones that were beaten up, like uh, Disney. Let's go look at Disney. That thing's getting wrecked. I actually took a nibble on Disney. I said I would take my first nibble at 117. 
and look, it's 115. I think you got the 114 today. I wanted more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically just like every time on the hourly, every time on the hourly that this thing goes blue, okay, um, but it has to be going up. So it's blue right now. It has triple buy signals, triple buy. Oh, it's up a dollar 39 in after hours too. A triple buy, huh? And it's pretty flat. Okay, um, Disney might be making a move tomorrow, guys. Just realize that. Oh, yeah, all the indicators say it's about to make a move. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah, so I, I was close. And the reason I knew that number 117 is because I've been in the markets for a long time. And I remember years ago, there was like this, you know, consolidation period where that 117 number just was forever. Uh, it felt like forever at the time. Well, we're, we're in that zone again. And so this is one of those major like areas. In fact, you can see the red line, that red line right there, 116.74, it goes back years, okay? And so this is like one of those lines. You can see how it kind of came up and it tried to fight here and then it broke out and now it's resistance and then it's trying and it's resistance. Well, it might, if it breaks out of here, which it looks like it might in the after hours with the triple buy, this is actually considered a reverse breakout. If it does that off this old, old, resistance now it could be it could be like a banger for the charts and remember all green tides are going to lift boats and if we're on a bullish pivot on those indexes why because the light the match because the catalyst because the earnings boom we in the game baby we in the game so whew, i'm feeling good i'm excited um i'm look i'm not going to talk your ear off um you know Tesla's a good price right now. There's a lot of good price stuff. I mean, let's let's just go look at a couple here. I mean, look, the name of the game is, well, there's a lot of ways to play the game, a lot of ways to eat the Reese's, right? So there's no wrong way. So, you know, buy low, sell high is definitely one way that works very good, okay? So if you have the money and the time, then you want to buy stocks like this that are down at $6.15 that we're way up here at this 25 bucks. You wanna do that. That's why I have so much SoFi. Now, the Biden keeps uh, messing with these uh, student loan payments, but FinTech's not going anywhere and there will be new loans and new students and you know, it'll, it'll work itself out. But this is, I mean, this is a long investment, right? Disney would be a long investment. PayPal, I mean, look at NVIDIA's at 184, guys. Now, on the daily, tons of bearish signals. I mean, tons of bearish signals, guys. But when the indexes pivot, usually the stocks do. So what happens if this old support right here, what happens if this old support that goes back years ends up turning into the bullish pivot, you know, like that on NVIDIA. And today, after hours, pre-market, tomorrow is maybe that. And you know what? I'm looking at my account. In after hours, it's up $19,944. That's another reason why I think that we might get a bullish pivot and this might be the kitchen sink rally, uh, kitchen sink sell off rally coming. I could totally be wrong, but usually with a high probability, 90 to 95%, it happens within seven days. It's been four, it's been four days since the kitchen sink sell off, but within seven uh, trading days, not, not like weekends, but trading days. Um, we're getting close and it looks like it's going to be earnings is going to be the catalyst that could set this monkey free. So I'm stoked. Um, you're going to look, I think Qualcomm, let's put Qualcomm in the list. I think Qualcomm was beaten down. It's a good stock guys. Good company. Oh, I tagged it red. So that's, that's in a downtrend on the daily, a big downtrend on the daily. However, on the hourly up $8, eight bucks. What, look at this. Boom. Flat curving blue ribbon above the 200. Who loves you, baby? This is why my alerts are killing it. This is how I've been able to dig out, maneuver, navigate, get around the juggling of the dynamite, the freaking tornado that I'm driving towards, drive around the eye of the storm like a beast. Yeah, did I go down? Yeah, but did I realize those losses? No. Am I pushing? Am I doing it right? Yeah, I'm inverse trading on the way down. So when it was going down, I was making money. Started going up. I took all that money and I threw it back into my, my low ones and I'm going to springboard up. That's what you might want to do too. Meanwhile, there's a lot of other little games that I'm playing, you know, the very low long-term ones. Start accumulating, start digging in on these big bullish pivots. Even if you don't make a higher high on the indexes and you come down further, next time it does that, you know, week, two weeks up the road, 
That's another little area that you can grab some and you just start accumulating. That's what the institutions are going to be doing too. I mean, you think that they are going to shy away from um, a good deal, especially one that can bring their, their investors good returns in the years to come? Of course not. They're smart. They're smart money. Another thing I just wanted to tell you from experience, okay? I don't know how long everybody's been in the market that watches this channel. Another thing I wanted to share with you is there are these moments in the market that become odd or strange or even eerie, okay? And the reason I was able to call my brother the night before is because something eerie happened. Something was happening in the volume. I like study volume like crazy. Like, okay, they can manipulate all they want and they will and they do and they've been doing it since the beginning of time and they get away with it, right? But one thing that they can't do is, is hide the manipulation from the skilled tactician who can study and understand volume. That's me and there's, a, there's other people out there uh, that do it. There's another guy that I'm, I'm buddies with. Uh, he's got a big YouTube channel. Um, and uh, he he's really good with volume. A lot of people are. Uh, volume is critical. So, yeah. Uh, so, before that big sell-off, I saw something in the volume. And then the futures, every day for months and months and like a year, they were like up like a lot or down or whatever. And, and you know, but that night, it was like flatlining, like beep, like do not resuscitate, right? Like the paddles out, still flatlining. And I'm talking like the NASDAQ futures were up like 50 cents and then they were down like 25 cents. <laughs> you know? Like it was like eerie, you know, it was like strange, right? That's when I called my brother and I was like, dude, put the stops on, man. Something's about to happen. Like something is about to happen. Look, first one out the door is the smart one out the door. Everybody else is going to follow, whether, you know, by taking their lead or by stops or margin calls or whatever, um, panic selling. So first out the door, there's somebody that always has a plan and it shows up in the volume. And I'm good at spotting that stuff. Um, so just like that time, I see something this time. And I mentioned it in my last video, didn't I? I mentioned it. I said, guys. I'm way back on the one hour and I'm seeing something sneaky going on, some sneaky accumulation back into these commodities. What happened? Three days in a row since then, it, they've gone up. I bought them and I'm up and they're saving me because I'm realizing those gains and I'm able to take those profits and those principles and dump it back in because when you get stuck and you have to go through this kind of stuff, when you're coming down and it's getting pretty dirty, you need to de-risk. You need to have less positions. You need to consolidate your positions, but you need to know how to consolidate those positions into bullish pivots, springboard out, and don't get stuck and be emotional like, oh, it's going to keep going. No, look at the chart. Get out a little early. First one out the door. You know, let it let it run for a few days if that's what the charts are going to tell you, and then get your money out with your principal and de-risk. Be out of margin, okay? And then, you know, consolidate in it. What I'm trying to do is just get it all out so I can just go heavy into trades because I'm good with the technicals and I seem to always do good with just the trading. It's the holding that gets you messed up in this market. Again, we are not in an investable market quite yet. However, there are 52 week lows and there are good companies that will not go bankrupt and you should consider some accumulation on these guys. DraftKings is low. Let me show you something real quick on DraftKings that I, I bought it. I, bought, I have uh, 2,000 of these uh, right now. Um, which I'll have a lot more, but this price is so attractive. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. See how the blue line, it kind of curved there, and then it's kind of flat line? Well, you just got a double buy. That's really good. You're a little up in the after hours. Let's go look at the daily. Let's go see what's going on. Let's just keep an eye on this thing real quick. And DraftKings is still showing. Okay, so it fought on the support, broke down, failed. It's showing red. Now, on the HMA, the ribbons are red, way below the 200, and you got this long pattern, okay? You got this long, long downtrend, okay? And you're at the end of it. So something big is going to happen. And what happens on these things is they go big, either up or down. But with this particular pattern, if you were looking at it as, say, a, you know, descending triangle, let's just say, Okay, 
if you were looking at it like this, I'll make that one yellow so it kind of makes a little bit more sense. It kind of stands out for us. So if you were looking at it like this, let's say, usually these things fire to the upside. Well, there just happens to be an earnings. And what seems to be the catalyst that's going to work right now? The little match, that little spark. It's going to be the earnings. The blue line is hovering. It's waiting for something. It's waiting. What this means, because it stopped falling, is it means it's slowly getting under accumulation. When you see these push up and then come down, what it does is it starts to slow down the 200. It starts to slow down the ribbons. And it starts to flatten all the stuff out and kind of come sideways. And this goes sideways. And eventually, see, there's the middle. And then eventually this thing kind of starts going up. And as it goes up out here, this flattens and then they cross and you came out of phase four into phase one. So being in the middle at the bottom of the, the cup of, of phase four into phase one, that's like the money spot for those that can hold and those that can wait. That's the spot that the smart money knows, hey, it's a good deal. I now just got such a low PE, low multiple. I just became a value investor. Well, what happens when the when the value when you see value? It stabilizes the sector, it stabilizes the stock, it stabilizes the index, and then the traders come in and amplify the volume and it starts moving. Just like we had the bubbling tops at the top of the market, this is how you can get the bubbling uh the bubbling volume at the bottoms too. So every time that you get a, uh, a big bullish pivot, um, I'm hopeful, I'm not for sure, but I'm hopeful and I see some things that, that show me it's very possible um, that it could come and knowing that when there's a kitchen sink sell off and a ton of fear in the streets and blood in the streets, like there's bound to have one and things are lining up to earnings. Earnings are not showing like tremendous slowing growth or major fear. It should put the markets at ease and it should put you at ease too. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are learning. Get in the Discord. I have the link in the description. We're doing Wheelhouse Wednesdays, every Wednesday group training. And um, I have the Weeble link. You guys get $9,600 in free stocks. Amazon, Apple, all of it. You get it. Even Facebook's in there. And then uh, Amazon is um, fractional though but up to 9,600 just for signing up. And then if you decide to deposit money, you get more stocks. You get like five more or something like that. So you get a lot. And um, I'm gonna be bringing on two additional sponsors. I'm just trying to get to it. I'm just, I'm busy. Like I said, I worked 18, 20 hour days, but I'm trying to get to it. I have emails, one's a crypto exchange and one is a stock exchange. I'm very excited uh, to work with both. So I will be bringing them on and discussing that and probably doing tutorials on their platforms um and get started there but yeah i mean disney DraftKings, paypal is so low um edit was another one that was super low but i don't think it's a buy forward i i, I buy forward all the time for trades i'll grab like two thousand shares and go up like 50 cents i'll make a thousand or i'll go up 75 cents or a dollar i'll make two grand like no problem ford is an easy one to trade um hood i just it's so low i mean jesus Lucid just bought that at like 18 bucks or 18.22. I mean, that's so low, dude. Like, so low. I mean, might as well just get some, right? Um, Neo, Neo, sixteen dollars and seven. Let's go look at Neo. Let's see what's going on with Neo. Neo, Jesus Christ, this poor stock. <laughs> this thing is just like this thing feels to me almost like it made a third. I don't know how long you guys have been in the market, but this thing rallied like 1,300 percent a couple years ago. It was sick. It was like two dollars this share. It just went am it was like way back in here it was sick yeah two dollars and 71 cents and it went all the way to 64 dollars. it was insane that's why everybody's still stuck on neo just like you're stuck on bitcoin and they're stuck on a lot of other ones like facebook because they know these things can move when they want to move but what a lot of people don't know is that there's four market phases and how to spot phase four phase one, phase two, phase three, back to phase four, and where the accumulation phase is, and where the participation phase, and the distribution phase. Right now, we're in the dirty, nasty, juggling dynamite phase four, but we're coming out of phase four. I'm hopeful. I just worry about the Fed consistently wanting the values to go down. That is why when you find a bullish pivot, you get that money in, you get it in right, you springboard out, you get it to the side, you de-risk, you stay out of margin, it's volatile. So, you know, if you're going to be in, you need to be in and out like a burglar, okay? 
You're going to come in. You're going to you're going to sneak in. You're going to crack the safe. You're going to take the loop and you're going to snatch and grab and you're out. You got the car running outside with the homie. So you're out basically <laughs> in and out. I'm not kidding. In and out. You need to trade this market unless you want those low ones and you're going to start to you know accumulate a portfolio. These, these bullish pivots could be a good time to do that. But uh, look, I'm going to leave it there. Who loves you, baby? Welcome to the wheelhouse. Thank you.